I work on uh, late Neolithic China and early Bronze Age. Um, primarily work at the social organizations. Um, I also work on the maritime archaeology of early modern era in China and Southeast Asia. Uh, that's ranging from uh, 13th to 17th century AD. So I work on maritime ports, ceramic production, and uh, shipwrecks, that kind of material, porcelain. I, my dissertation research is on excavation of uh, uh, mid-second millennium BC Bronze Age uh, city in eastern China. Um, that's kind of a frontier town uh, for the Shang civilization. Um, so I primarily worked with animal bones from feasting, a ritual, and uh, divination context. Traditionally, we have been focusing on the Yellow River Valley, the Central Plains, mm -hmm. which has been seen as the cradle of civilization because all the Bronze Age states emerged there. Uh, later, we have realized that uh, the Yangtze River Valley, Northeast China, um, all had its flourishing prehistorical civilizations before the rise of the Central Plains, the coastal region. So uh, scholars have adopted a more pluralistic view. Um, later, the disco uh, discovery of San Jingdui uh, civilization in Sichuan have drawn attention to the uh, little known Sichuan Basin. Um, so since this landscape is so diverse, I think we have to have a very different view on how to approach, to assess the importance. Um, different regions have a different role to play mm -hmm. at different times. So I think it's almost like equally important in that way. Mm -hmm. I think archaeology has always been important in one way or another, except in these extraordinary times. Um, for example, Cultural Revolution. Um, but at different time, there is a different assessment of what is important and how to do it and what kind of the challenge they face. Um, yeah, in the recent years, I, I would agree, yeah, there's a greater importance, um, emphasis placed in archaeology, yes. In the, in the past, I think they have, for example, if they built a highway, uh, they would do a survey, um, probing every uh, 50 meters or systematic uh, investigation and then have an inventory of the size to be uh, affected. And then they would choose how many to perform salvage archaeology. Except they never really tell you how that assessment was made. Uh, because that they seem to assume everybody know what is important. It must be rich, um, thick in its stratigraphy, um, and then uh, well represented in terms of different components, different period, occupation of different period. The problem is it was the uh, change in research paradigm what is important can be very different. So they need to be very uh, explicit on how these choices should be made and there should be uh, discussions on how different perspectives could be accommodated mm -hmm. in making such assessment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, I think to me, a very important issue they need to confront. In the U.S., there's at least three major components. Um, one is historical archaeology, that's after European colonization. Um, so you would include all these civil war, battlefield, slavery, um, industrial legacy, all into this category. And then you would have the uh, legacy of uh, First Nations. 
Um, that involves a very different way to approach it. And then you have um, Egyptology, classical archaeology, Near Eastern archaeology, many U.S. institutions uh, practicing archaeology worldwide. And in China, uh, they are most archaeological institutions are focused on the cultural heritage falling to the perimeter of uh, current Chinese national boundary and they see their cultural heritage not as these different compartments rather than a continuum on the forming of uh, a, a multicultural uh, Chinese society. Um, how different uh, development somehow contributing to what you have the kind of cultural le legacy you can observe within the cultural boundary. Um, when you have this kind of difference, it's very difficult to have a, a comparison. So, so they have incorporated a lot of the theoretical um, framework coming from the U.S. institutions, traditions, such as the uh, social evolutionary scheme. Um, but in terms of managing this, to managing archaeological practice, uh, I think that's very different. I think this is an exciting time uh, because there's a greater emphasis on the, on the side of the North American uh, universities uh, on teaching and research in Chinese and East Asian archaeology. Um, I think there's a lot of potentials uh, coming from that kind of research. Um, I think the emphasis should not only focusing on the rise of civilizations, um, but also uh, to rethink the idea of historical archaeology in a more global framework. Um, history was not born since European colonization. Um, there is a greater interdependency and uh, interactions um, that gave rise to the um, emergence of the modern world system. And what we have seen today, um, for example, the nature, the shape and nature of Asian economy has kind of was embedded in this historical legacy uh, in which the, the, the rise of more modern European uh, economy uh, plays a part. Uh, so, so it will be equally interesting to, to see this kind of archaeology of the early global era.